Okay, if you take your mask off, you can have a little of the fish, but you're not having the chips because the salad cream doesn't agree with you. What is it about British fish and chips? Everybody loves them all over the world. Nobody makes them at home though. They go out to the fish and chip shop or the local pub. And often at the local pub, they're frozen fish or frozen chips, but they're quite easy to make at home. We used to make them at Buckingham Palace all the time, every Friday. And I'm gonna share with you two recipes. The recipe that we did for the staff, the more traditional fish and chips, and then the recipe that we made for the queen, the queen's fish and chips. Does the queen eat fish and chips? Mmm, I'll show you in a few minutes. We start off with our chips, and to get really good chips, you need really good potatoes. In the UK, we use Mary's Pipers. They're just the best chips. In the US, I read so many people writing recipes where they're using rustic potatoes, and I just can't get along with rustic potatoes for chips. For me, Yukon Gold, they're the best. I love the color. I mean, chips are golden, right? You're already starting off with golden with the Yukon Golds. So peel the potato first. You don't have to. A lot of the chip shops don't. But if we're doing authentic fish and chips, we start off peeling the potatoes. That one's alive. Then we're going to make our chips. It helps if you can try and keep them all about the same size so they sort of cook at the same time. And then we don't have to have huge chips this size. So you can cut long ways if you want or just across. Once you've done that, the chips need to go into water because they've got all that starch around them. Otherwise, when you drop them into the oil, they'll stick together and you get big nasty ones like that that don't really cook. So drop them into water and swish them about. Get rid of that starch from the outside. Let them sit there for a while so all the starch runs off. Then drain them off onto paper towel. The next stage is cooking them, but real fish and chips, you know, the traditional ones that you get from the chip shops in the UK, those ones, they're twice cooked. So they go into the oil, first of all, at 265 degrees, that's 130 Celsius, and that's to blanch them. Now blanching means to cook without color. So we cook the chips with no color. So when we lift them out, they'll be the same color as they went in, obviously, and they'll be soft, they'll be ready cooked. Once the chips are soft and cooked without color, you can drain them onto some paper towel and then they're cooked. There's no color to them, but if you squeeze them, you can see they're nice and soft, already cooked. All that we have to do now is once we've fried the fish, we can drop the French fries in, drop, drop the chips in, right? at a higher temperature and that will make them nice and crispy. I grew up on fish and chips in the UK and I can remember as far back as being a little boy going to the fish and chip shop on a Friday night. Everybody seemed to eat fish and chips on Friday nights and I remember going to the fish and chip shop with my granddad and I'd be looking in that fish counter at all that golden fish batter glaring and glistening away and it was it was amazing and seeing those batter bits at the end, you know, the, the crunchy bits that fall off the fish. And my granddad, every week, the same old joke. He'd say, oh, can you do me a bucket of chips, please? And a tail end of cod and leave the head on. It took me a few years to realize he was asking for the biggest piece of fish in the fish and chip shop. <sighs> Happy memories. Traditional fish and chips, they are easy to make at home though. And the secret is getting everything prepared. So you're cooking at three different temperatures in effect. You don't need a whole bank of fryers to be able to do that. You just work in order. You start off with the chips and you blanch those, as I said earlier, 265, 130 degrees Celsius. Cook them without color and you can make them the day before if you want to. Bring them out to room temperature when you're ready to start cooking the fish. And then you make the fish batter. When you're doing the fish batter, Fish batter is really important. Now, some people will go for sort of a, a packet mix, which is nasty. Others, 
they want that sort of crispy, crunchy, flaky, and bubbly. And what makes that? It's it can be sparkling water, it can be baking soda, it can be baking powder, or it can be beer. And my favorite recipe is one using beer. Now, when you open a can of beer and pour it into the batter, it all starts frothing up. And it's the frothing up that makes it amazing. So don't make the batter too far ahead. So back to those temperatures again. When we cook the fish, the fish is going to go into the fryer at 360 degrees. That's uh, 180 Celsius. You cook the fish and then take that out, put it onto a wire rack, maybe in the oven for um, a few minutes just to warm, stay warm. You don't need to heat it or cook it or anything. It'll already, already be cooked in the fryer. But you can take the temperature up then to finish cooking the chips. And that's when they go nice golden brown and crispy. Let's make the batter. When you're cooking fish in England, it can be haddock. You can use cod. I like to use cod. I like the sort of meatier fish. And I think it holds well in the batter. The batter doesn't need to be so thick. It's like cardboard. You can slice through it. It needs to be crunchy and crispy, but delicate as well. That little shell, imagine like an egg around the egg yolk and you crack into it and it's crunchy, crispy. The batter, not the, uh, the raw egg. I start off with the flour. So I have a cup of flour and I put some salt in there and then an egg. Now the egg is gonna help give me the color, but also the binding in there as well. And then I've got some beer. The fish, I've cut it into two really nice loin size pieces. And before it goes into the batter, it has to go into the flour. The flour holds it all together, and then it goes into the batter, and that's what makes the uh, batter stick. Uh, to the fish. I don't need to season the fish because I've put my seasoning in here and then once it comes out we're going to put salt and vinegar and everything on top so we don't need too much more seasoning there on the fish. Ready! We have to get the fryer at 365 degrees for the fish so then I can pour my beer Give this a mix around and don't worry if there's some lumps in there. They'll just be the real crunchy bits of batter once it's cooked. You see all that frothing on there. That's important. That's why we've got to work quick for adding this into the fryer. So first of all, dip the fish into the flour and then the batter. The batter seems a little bit runny, but that's fine. We want it that way. Otherwise, it would be too claggy and crispy. Then to the fryer. And then when we get to the fryer, it's one drop. One, and then into the fryer. While the fish is draining all the oil, then we can drop the fries into the hot oil. The oil's now at 375 degrees, and we're gonna cook them until they're nice and crispy. Now, the chips are golden brown and really crispy. I'll drain them off to get rid of the excess fat. While they're hot, that's when I want to put some salt on them, because the salt really attaches to that oil on there. Listen to them. Are they just the crispiest chips you'll ever find? So, fish, chips, and then when I was growing up, we had mushy peas. I love mushy peas. Mushy peas, marifat peas, dried peas, and you cover them in boiling water, a little baking soda overnight. Drain that off next day, the water and the soda, some fresh water, bring them to the boil, let them simmer, and you get these gorgeous mushy peas. These chips, oh, so hot, straight from the fryer. Chips, fish, and mushy peas. Yeah. 
English fish and chips, traditional fish and chips, like you get at the chip shops in England, like we used to serve to the staff at Buckingham Palace. I love fish and chips, but someone loves fish and chips better than I do. And that's my cameraman, Harry. Harry, come and try this. It's not really good. Thank you. Nice and crispy fish, right? Mm. Crunchy chips. Mm. They're good. Not as good as Gordon Ramsay's. Oh, for goodness sake, get back to behind the camera. For goodness sake. <laughs> that was scripted, by the way. This is how we serve fish and chips at the palace. The thing we're missing from it is vinegar. You have to put vinegar on the chips, malt vinegar, and then... At the palace, the Queen's chefs, we always served salad cream on our chips. Chips, vinegar, salad cream. In my opinion, the best fish and chip shop in the world is a place called the Anstruda Fish Bar in Scotland, just outside Edinburgh. Um, in Scotland, they have something called brown sauce. You have fish and chips, salt and sauce. That's good, right? So that's something like HP sauce with malt vinegar, sort of softened and mixed together. And then that goes over your chips. And now we're cooking. You can find the salad cream, HP sauce, malt vinegar at most good grocery stores. But if you're having trouble finding them, I've put a link to them in the description below. They really make a difference. We've now got to make the Queen's fish and chips.